World's Iron is a grouping of seven different organizations uh, which have come together in a sort of informal way to promote uh, literature in Ireland in all its forms. So we're quite concerned about, I suppose, about um, mid-career writers and writers maybe who have published one or two books but maybe don't have a contract for a third or fourth book and we want to try and help and support them. WordCon is the first, I suppose, public event that um, Words Iron has got involved in and I suppose it came about because uh, it became clear to uh, some members of Words Ireland that there was no set guidelines around uh, events um, for authors and no set guidelines for event organisers or festivals either. So what I mean by that is that um, there are people who just didn't realise that they should be paying for writers to attend, they should be paying their expenses, they should be paying overnight accommodation. It's unfair if you're running a festival and the, the guys who are putting up the stage or doing the lighting or collecting the money at the door or whatever are all getting paid, but actually the people who you're coming to see don't get paid. So we have a diverse group of people here today and we have lots of festival organisers. Um, event organisers. On the panels we have got some authors like Nuno O'Connor, we have festival organisers like Bert Wright who runs Mountains to the Sea, and um, we have Sarah Bannon here who's the Head of Literature at the Arts Council, and uh, we also have Joanne Harris who's uh, the international recognised author who's come over from the UK to talk specifically about um, paying authors who attend festivals. And, uh, you know, we're an event organiser ourselves. We're putting on this event and uh, it's always helpful to have a, a big name because it does attract um, more people. And I suppose it's with that in mind, um, uh, we asked Joanne to come over. And so I suppose we're practicing what we preach, so to, so to speak, in that we are paying her to come here and paying her expenses and uh, making sure that yeah, she's here on the day where she is. And we're very grateful that she's taken time out of her schedule and out of her writing to come over and speak. And and uh, we're delighted that that's the case. So I invite you to join me in giving a very warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Joanne Harris. The story of a musician who ambled into a town in Germany some time ago in the 17th century. It was a town with a vermin problem. <laughs> and the people in charge presumably were wealthy because where you get wealth, you also get vermin. We all know this. <laughs> I think there's quite a significant difference between festivals in Ireland and festivals in the UK. I think in the UK people are still getting used to the idea that being an author is a profession and not some kind of philanthropic vocation, whereas here I think there's already a great deal of support for authors and paying authors and, and valuing the work they do. There are lots of different sizes of festivals. You've been speaking about small festivals, I've been to small festivals, I've been to great big ones. It seems to me that in England, certainly, the size of the festival is not necessarily an indicator of generosity at all. I think I've been talking about paying the author and festivals and festivals expectations for some years now, and I have seen a slow but progressive shift. Particularly, I think it's been driven by readers who were not, I think, initially aware that whatever ticket prices they were paying for a lot of big festivals were not actually going to pay off this at all. And I think the, the level of, of public support has helped enormously and people are beginning slowly but surely to, to change their minds and to understand that if it's worth having then it's also worth paying for. There are plenty of horror stories out there and I've had a few odd experiences myself. You know, I have a uh, writing colleague who is still waiting to be paid 11 months after a festival. I've had experience myself of, you know, delayed payments and things like that. But generally, generally, I think we're doing it well in Ireland. I do think possibly writer's fees could be higher. Um, you know, your average writer doesn't do even one festival a month. We all do other peripheral work like reviewing and teaching and that. Um, it's not a lot of money and it's almost impossible to live on. Yeah, so my company Tramp Press is often approached um, for our authors to participate in events and we also pitch authors to, to do events. Our experience has been very good. Um, we are in an interesting position in that we can argue for the author so they don't have to do that mortifying thing of asking for money. But generally, we have been, we found our authors have been treated well. Um, particularly somebody like Mountains to Sea, they tend to treat the authors very well. You don't have to come looking for money, they, they will do that. Something like this is very valuable because we can cite discussions that were had on the panels and say as far as we know this is the norm and so on. There's the sort of when it's omerta like that um, people don't know if they're being treated fairly or not. The more you know about it the more you can say this is not common practice or best practice. 
Yeah, I mean, funding is always a problem with festivals, but uh, if you can't afford to pay your, your authors, you, you can't run a festival and you shouldn't be running. <laughs> uh, that's the, the one line item that's irreducible. You've got, you've got to reward the talent. They're the content providers, and the idea that you can run without author fees is uh, preposterous, and that's what we're trying to change. Well, I think we hope to produce, as a result of today, some guidelines around um, authors attending festivals and, and, uh, and events. And um, you know, those guidelines are yet to be produced, but I hope that they will give some food for thought for organisers of events, that they will understand that actually we need to think that when we're looking for funders to fund our event, that we need to bear in mind that there will be a cost around authors, as well as other costs to hire the venue and to pay for the lighting and the heating, etc. And that the cost of paying for an author to attend is just a normal part of putting on an event. I think if, if we manage to uh, achieve that as a result of today, you know, WordCon, uh, well then that would be a great result.